Okay, section 3.2, logarithmic functions and their graphs. A uh, logarithm should look familiar from integrated 3. It's an inverse of an exponential function. And once again, we'll be treating it just like all of our other transformations. So A, B, C, and D do exactly what they did for transformations at the beginning of the chapter. You've got your foldable. The... Big thing we need to know is that they do have an asymptote. It's x equals zero in the parent graph over on the side. But in general, it's x equals c. Don't forget the x equals. And x can't equal c because that would make you take the log of zero and you can't take the log of zero or negative numbers. So we're gonna treat it like transformations. So that means the first thing we're gonna need is the points. So if you were doing log base two of x, remember it's the inverse of an exponential. So if I rewrite this, two to the y equals x, that could help you get your xy table. But because y is in the air, you're going to plug in y values of negative 2 to negative, sorry, negative 2 to positive 2. And then the answers you get are going to go on the x side, 2 to the negative 2, 1 fourth. This should look familiar. Another thing you could have done is you could have just taken your 2 to the, ew, that's not a good color, 2 to the x equals y and swapped your x and y values. So the table should look familiar. See if you can come up with the table if it was a log base 3. So pause the video, fill in an xy table for log base 3. Okay, check your points with mine. Remember, we've all agreed that we're just putting commas instead of writing the parentheses around all these points every single time. So now that we know how to get the points, you could do the same thing with log base four, five, etc. So let's see what our first equation is. So first, this is not in graphing form yet. So take a minute and put this in graphing form. You should be able to do this now. So pause the video and put yours in graphing form and then compare with mine. Okay, check your graphing form. You needed to factor out the 2. Now look and see what base of a log problem you're dealing with. This is a base 3. So write the coordinates for the original function. So original log base 3 of x. And then we're going to transform it. This should feel familiar. Fill in the table for log base 3 of x. There's our points for regular log base 3 with no transformations. Now look at our g of x equation. Figure out what you're going to do to your x's. So b is 2, so x over 2. And it says minus 2, but we have to do plus 2. You should be understanding where these numbers are coming from by now, hopefully. And then ay plus d, so negative y plus 1. Okay, let's start these together. x over 2 plus 2. So when it's 1 9th and I divide it by 2, now it's 1 18th plus 2 is 2 and 1 18th. 1 3rd divided by 2 is 1 6th plus 2, 2 and 1 6th. See if you can finish the x's. Pause the video. Okay, check your x values. Now go through and do your y values. Pause the video again. Okay, so these are our new coordinates. Set up some axes that make sense for what we have. And then go ahead and plot them if you're ready.
actually, before we plot them, we should talk about our answer blinks. Same as exponential answer blinks, asymptote, and that's actually where I usually start. That's why I want to fill that in first. Domain range and intercepts. So looking at our equation straight from C, if I plugged in 2 into either one of these, it would make me take the log of 0. I can't take the log of 0, so x equals 2 is your asymptote, which is why it's getting really, really close to 2. So make sure you include your asymptote. And then try to plot the other points as good as you can. the asymptote slowly curves away. Okay, see if you can answer the other questions. So domain, it's always going to include your C value because it's hugging two but not touching it. So two parentheses to infinity. Range is all real numbers. X-intercept happened to show up in the table. And because of that asymptote, there is no y-intercept. Try the one on the next page. Why don't you start with putting it in graphing form, and let's get log base two points written down so that we can transform those. Pause the video while you do this. This is our last example. You need to pause it as we go so that you know if you understand or not. So factoring out one-third, when you divide one by one-third, you get negative three in the parentheses, which will, by the way, be my asymptote. Well, not negative three, but that'll be involved in my asymptote. I also did log base to the parent graph points. Let's just do asymptote now while we're at it. So because in graphing form, it's x minus 3, x equals positive 3 will be my asymptote. Okay, math to get the new points. x over a third, but instead of taking a third of something, we flip and multiply. So 3x plus 3, and then 1 half y minus 2. See if you can fill this whole table in. Pause the video and try filling in the whole table on your own. No calculators. Okay, check your table with mine. Then graph your asymptote. And graph all the other points as good as you can. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so notice I did not plot 15, negative 1. You're welcome to make your mind that long. So I have no idea where that just unpaused at. So I've graphed it. Sorry about that. I graphed it. I didn't plot all the points. I decided 15 was a little too much to make my paper go that far, so I just went to 9. My asymptote was at x equals 3. My domain was 3 to infinity with parentheses. Range was all real numbers. And intercept, y-intercept does not exist. What I want you to do now is set up an equation to find your x-intercept. So x-intercept, you always make y equals 0 to find it. Start moving things over. Also, I use the non-graphing form just because it's easier. It's got less parentheses and less stuff going on. So add the 2. Okay, 
multiply by two to get rid of the one half. When you can't solve something in log form, you switch it to exponential form. This should look familiar. We learn this in integrated three, switching from log to exponent, exponent to log. So this equation is two to the fourth equals one third x minus one. See if you can finish solving this. I'm running out of space. So two to the fourth is 16 plus one is 17. And then times three, you should get 51 comma zero. After I do all this, I get x equals 51, and I write it as a point on my answer blank.